Hey everyone, welcome to another $1,000 strap search. I've got my $1,000 in singles here and I've already gone through those. And we'll take a look and see what I found in just a moment. But before I do that, let's start out with this week's tip. This week's tip should have been last week's tip based on what I showed you guys. Uh, but this week's tip is something fairly simple. When you've got your straps and you're going through your straps, you're going to notice that sometimes you're going to have bills that are dog-eared like that. See how the corner was folded over like that? Every time you go through your bills, make sure you unfold those dog-eared corners. Because those dog-eared corners, well, imagine if it was dog-eared before it was printed. That's how you get the errors that I found last week. So, just like I said, a simple tip. As you go through your singles, make sure those corners, unfold those corners. You never know. You may get lucky and find a miscut bill. That's how they slip out of the uh, system. That's how some of those get circulated for as long as they do without anybody ever finding them. It's because nobody ever bothered to unfold the corner. So that's this week's tip. Unfold those dog-eared corners. Maybe you'll be in for a surprise. Maybe you'll be in for uh, a, a nice little fortune. <laughs> All right, so here's my thousand and singles. I already went through those. Let's take a peek at what we got this week. Uh, this week, I do want to say that I did go to a different bank, so I had no idea what to expect going to a new bank. Uh, I don't want to say it's a new bank, it's usually a bank I deposit at rather than withdrawal from. So, I was very surprised. The last bill I'm going to show you was actually the first bill I found, but uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Did find some Where's George bills. I don't recognize this stamp, so I'm sure this is somebody that I haven't encountered before. I will run that one. I did find another one right here at Stamp Where's George on the side. Track this bill at Where'sGeorge.com. If you haven't done that, if you haven't found a bill or recorded a bill, please do because it's just a really neat system. See where it's been. Okay, I did find some trinaries. Zeros, ones, and fours on this particular one. Ones, twos, and fours on this one here. Almost tore in half, so you know that's going back in circulation. Uh, this one is also not in the greatest of shape. Ones, twos, and eights. One off from a repeater, but yeah, I, I try not to save one offs for particular reasons. Um, but yeah, this one's also pretty rough, so probably going to go back. Uh, let's see what we got here. This one is twos, fives, and sevens. Check out that one. That that just that has a really cool look to it. I'm glad it's a trinary because I've got all the you know I can I'm gonna keep this particular one. Uh, it's zeros, ones, and eights. It starts off with three eights. It ends with three eights. You've got the one and the zero in the middle. It's in really nice shape as well. So I'm gonna hold on to that one. That one's that that would be a that would be a cool one to to find multiples of. Um, this one is a trinary and it's quads. It's got quad eights on the back. Five of a kind if you want to count the first eight. Uh, it's all zeros, threes, and eights. And it's got the added little bonus of having all these eights. It's out of the B series uh, as well. So having the B on the end at a glance almost gives it the look of having another eight. But uh, still at quads, still a trinary, and in good shape. Another quads, quad ones, also ending in a one, so technically five of a kind, but I always like them to, when they're all together like that. That's how I always qualify them. So even though it's got five, I still consider that just quads. Quad threes on this particular one. Quad fives, this one is extremely crisp, and I've actually found a small batch of bills that were in consecutive order. So when I found the first one that was two three or uh, two eight three six five 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 three, I was like, oh this is gonna be good because sure enough there was four, there was five and there was six. So I pulled out the quad fives. Quad sixes on this particular one. Quad sixes on this one as well, starting off with the quads. And I did get some stars. I believe most of the stars were all 2013. Um, these will all go into my stack. And like I said, when I get enough to check, I will check them all at once. Because nothing is more annoying than looking 200 times and not finding anything before you find that first one. So I always like to check all my stars at mycurrency.com and I'll do it all at once. And I usually do an update there. This one, uh, uh, being from the D series, what is that? That's a... Uh, Cleveland. 
starting with the two zeros. I don't see a whole lot like that, so that, that may be a bill that makes a return trip after I do my uh, lookups. I didn't find a whole lot of old bills in this batch, though. I did find a couple, 1999 here, another 99 here, not the greatest of shape. 95, almost completely folded in half, almost tore. So yeah, it wasn't in really good shape there. And this 95 is in better shape, but it's still not that good. 95 that somebody actually wrote on, so that's probably not going to be a keeper. Oldest bill I found was this 1988, 81A, 1981A, and it's got a piece missing to it. So it's, uh, well, it's just folded in half, but I mean, it's tore. Rough shape. But, like I said, this was all from a bank that I had never been, or I had never gotten money from to search, so I wanted to see what they had. And then the the last bill that I'm holding here was the first bill of the group that I found. Um, it's always unnerving when you first start going through, you're always hoping you're going to find something, and the more bills you go through, you know there's going to be something, but you just can't wait to find that first find of the batch. And this was the first find of this particular batch. Yeah, go ahead. You can hate me. I found another binary. Six, seven, six, seven, seven, six, seven, seven. So that's like two binaries in the last six weeks or so that I found. This one's in really good shape. It's a 2013. Um, yeah, it's got that crispness to the paper. You can hear as I bring it over my fingers like that. But yep, got me another binary. Like I said, two in six weeks. Uh, that's that's just an incredible find. And like I said, going through these bills, that was the first one I pulled. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I was to go through the rest of these bills. So that's what I had this week from my search. So what interesting thing can I pull out? Well, I've got another $1 bill. This one happens to be a little bit older. Almost 100 years older, to be exact. This one is what is known as a Federal Reserve Bank note. Uh, this is from 1918. 1918 Federal, Re Federal Reserve Bank note. Not a Federal Reserve note. Okay, there's a difference between a Federal Reserve note and a Federal Reserve Bank note. This one you'll notice on the top says National Currency on it. And on the bottom it does say Federal Reserve Bank note. It's printed with a blue seal, but this is not a silver certificate, okay? Um, Federal Reserve Bank notes, these were guaranteed by the actual Federal Reserve Banks. The Federal Reserve Banks would put money on, uh, put, uh, this one says it right here, uh, secured by United States Certificates of Indebtedness or United States one-year gold notes deposited within the treasurer, or with the treasurer of the United States of America. So what that means is that the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago put money and or gold on reserve to the uh, Federal Reserve, and with that, they were the ones that were guaranteeing this particular note. Now, this one being Chicago, of course, it's got G. Chicago, G, that's G and 7th, the 7th letter, so that's all there. Um, depending on which Federal Reserve Bank, there are 12 of them, uh, that would depend on what city would be listed here, and that would also uh, change whatever number that was there. But each of the Federal Reserve Banks guaranteed this money. This was not guaranteed by the federal government. Um, just to bring an example, yes, it is one of the large size notes, as you can see compared to my binary here. But the binary right on top, you can see it says Federal Reserve Note. The top of the other bill says National Currency. And if you look on the bottom, that says Federal Reserve Bank Note, not Federal Reserve Note. Not <laughs> This one's guaranteed by the Federal Reserve. This one is guaranteed by the specific Federal Reserve Bank. The Federal Reserve Bank guaranteeing this one was, of course, Chicago. So that is a little history on the Federal Reserve Note. If we take a look at the back, you can find out why this one was called a Flying Eagle. A 1918 Flying Eagle $1 bill. Uh, just a really cool picture of the eagle in flight holding the American flag in its clutches like that. Really cool bill. Um, pretty intricate work there. 
and I'll go I'll, I'll zoom in as close as I can and you can if you want you can pause that and try to read everything that's on there my eyes aren't good enough to read that my eyes are good enough to read this portion over here though uh, 1918 Chicago he had a price at 130 says very fine that was what he had it graded at well that's how he graded it at 130 but if I take a close look at this bill you can see that the, the, it's not perfect on the edges, you know, by any stretch. There's a little bit of dirt, a little bit of use. It has been handled. But even going through it as close as I'm going through here, I don't see any major creases. It looks like there's a really light crease here. But for the most part, this bill is in pretty good shape. It's, uh, you know, there's no writing. It's pretty good. Uh, this off-color section right here, that's just the light passing through from the sticker over on this side here. That's all that is. It's not on the bill. Um, let's take a look at the big book, see what the big book says, see if I got a good deal or not. Here's the big book. Federal Reserve Banknotes, that's the highlight of when it was. They actually did it in two separate printings. Um, this particular note, there we are right there, that's... This one's St. Louis, so it's got H and 8, because St. Louis, 8 is the 8th letter. H represents St. Louis. There's the full picture on the back there. My particular note, if I remember, is number seven, one, or 726. Or was it 727? 727, right there. So we're talking Chicago, 1918. Those were the signatures on it, Tehe and Burke. And... As I go across, let's bring this in so that we can make sure that I'm seeing the exact right stuff. Right there. T. He Burke starts out at 75 and goes to 135 once it gets to a 12, if I remember right. Yep. First column is a very good 8, fine is 12. Very fine 20 for this particular note. Very fine 20 puts it at about 175. 175, if it was perfect, it looks like it goes all the way to 7, what is that, 760? 750. 750 would be perfect. So this one is somewhere between the 135 and 175 range, I'm sure. I got it for less than that. He had it priced, like I said, at 130, and I know that I talked him down a little bit. So that is the Federal Reserve Bank note of 1918 part of the national currency. Uh, this is also the same series that has the $2 battleship note that's on my soon to get list, I hope. Um, but yeah, when I saw this one, I was like, oh, that's that series, isn't it? So I knew I didn't have the $1 bill. Now I do. I'll be on the lookout for that $2 bill. All right, guys, if you learned anything new this week, go ahead and hit that like button. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Always looking for new people that leave comments. And thanks, everyone, for watching. I appreciate it. I try to answer everybody's questions. I try to answer everybody's comments. I'll be back again next week with some more new stuff. See you then. Bye-bye.